Welcome to the show that was Talk, Talk, Talk featuring, sorry, by St. Michael featuring Anya Gold. Um, I'm your host, Mike Batter. This is Let's Catch Up. Let's Catch Up with Mike. Um, and as I said, I'm your host, Mike Batter. And welcome to the show. Uh, it has been a while. And I know I look like a uh, jack-o'-lantern that's been left out well past Thanksgiving, and I apologize for that, but uh, you know what? I, I owe you all um, a couple of episodes at least, so I apologize for uh, being behind on that, but I have been so busy, and it has been so crazy. <laughs> um, I, no guests today. No guests today. Um, I've just been busy, busy, busy. So today's going to be an episode just about me and kind of what I've been up to. Um, busy, 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 busy. Um, and not really much to report, which is kind of sad. Um, let's see if I get my microphone going a little bit better. Um, some, my sound is a little off, so I apologize. Um, yeah, busy without much to report. So what have I been up to? Um, yeah, it's going to be a little free thought today. Um, busy with work, which is always good. Uh, at least it beats the alternative. You know, no one really likes to work. Um, but, um, but first, let me let me back up a little bit. I, I owe you all uh, at least a few episodes. I know when I first started this show, I promised episodes weekly. And then, you know, as things happen and the world changes, um, life gets in the way. And uh, weekly episodes become monthly episodes, which is fine. You know, I, do, I don't make money doing this show. I do it for fun. And, um, you know, the world has definitely changed since this show started uh, 20 episodes ago. Um, and, you know, uh, well, almost 40 episodes ago, if you count the, uh, the episodes that were started with the original uh, format, um, but 20 episodes ago under this format. And I, um, you know, the world changed a little bit, oh, a lot, actually, if you count the pandemic and everything that, <laughs> that uh, came with that uh, big global shift. Um, and, uh, you know, things just have, have changed a lot uh, for me professionally. Um, thankfully, not much personally. My husband and I are still doing, you know, wonderful 25 years together. Um, we lost our cat, uh, our our. 20 year old uh, cat fearless our oldest cat passed away last week um, which was heartbreaking um, she was our oldest of our five indoor cats and um, we have three outdoor cats uh, that kind of belong <laughs> to the neighborhood but you know they spend most of their time on our porch uh, our porch kitties we call them we have our four indoor cats so we're not we're not lacking for feline companions but um, you know, twenty years is a long time to have a to have a pet, and uh, you're definitely a member of the family. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, it was really hard for us. Uh, we lost our dog Stanley of seventeen years last summer. So to lose Fearless, our our cat, um, kind of right behind that was really really tough, um, and heartbreaking because um, she struggled. She had a seizure and it was out of the blue. Uh, very, very uh, rough uh, grand mal seizure, uh, just suddenly. And um, she recovered from the seizure, you know, within a few minutes, but then just very, very quickly went downhill. 
um, within a couple of days. So, um, and, and then about a week later, she was gone. And um, I had the, um, it's, it's odd to say, but I had the, the pleasure of holding her uh, during her last breaths. Um, I was sitting on our bedroom floor and, um, and I knew the time was coming because she, I didn't think she'd make it through the night that night. Um, and I slept on the floor with her, holding her, uh, making sure she was comfortable. You know, uh, I was laying next to her on her, on her kitty cat bed, uh, petting her and loving her and making sure she was comfortable. And, um, she made it through the night and, um, you know, we, I'd been feeding her with, uh, an eyedropper and, you know, making sure she was getting liquid because she was not strong enough to stand up and we'd had an appointment to take her to the vet. Um, you know, a, a final, uh, appointment to take her to the vet and, um, that next that next morning I thought well she's not going to make it today so I had taken off work and was just making her comfortable and holding on to her until the vet appointment and uh, you know she uh, was being very affectionate with me and I was holding her and telling her what a what a wonderful uh, kitty cat she was what a wonderful pet she'd been and what a wonderful companion she'd been and she just passed in my arms and it was really lovely because um, we'd had her since she was a, a newborn. And uh, so for her to be with me, you know, in my arms um, when she passed was a really special moment. Um, and I think it really changed me in, in some ways. So that was really tough. Um, but that's just the last week. So uh, let me tell you what's been going on since the last episode. Uh, we've had, <laughs> that's a lot, right? So um, we've had uh, quite a few things going on professionally, which is great. Um, I'm working on um, another uh, podcast, as you know, the OCD SOS podcast, which has had uh, quite a few episodes recorded. And um, we've got those up on um, Stitcher and Audible for free. Um, there are um, a few episodes that are out on the prescription, uh, prescription, on the, <laughs> it's early, it's 6.20 a.m. right now. I've been up since four um, because we have two new kittens and I'll tell you about those in a moment. Um, if you don't follow me on social media, you, you don't know I have two kittens. If you follow me on social media, you know that we, you definitely know we have two new kittens because they've been all over my feeds. And that's one of the other things we've been busy with. Um, but, uh, we, um, so we have a few episodes of those, uh, of the podcast, uh, recorded on, uh, the subscription services. So if you, if you subscribe to podcast, you've heard, the episodes and they're out um, just about every two weeks. We put new episodes out, so catch those. Um, and I've interviewed, uh, you know, um, lay people uh, with SO with uh, with SOS. Oh my lord! Let me get some coffee in me before I continue because uh, this is off to a great start. Oh, it must be decaf because it's not kicking in. Ooh, okay. Take two. I have interviewed um, mental health providers and I've interviewed uh, lay people with um, OCD um, on the OCD SOS podcast. And th the point of that podcast is to help end the stigma of obsessive compulsive disorder and talk about treatment options and talk about um, you know, support options for people with obsessive compulsive disorder which I suffer from. Um, and, you know, I, I don't use the word suffer lightly. Uh, I, I'm a high functioning um, uh, patient of obsessive compulsive disorder. And I won't go into it too much here because this is not the format for that, but there are, you know, there's five or six main types of, of OCD and, and then hundreds of subtypes of OCD. Um, and we get into that on, on the OCD SOS podcast. Um, but I've talked to, uh, I've interviewed, you know, lay people who, who suffer from OCD. And I've, I've talked to volunteers in um, various support groups and people who work with uh, patients who have OCD. And I've, and I've worked, I've 
um, interviewed uh, mental health providers that we, you know, we just don't have enough mental health providers for specifically for OCD in this country. Um, so I've talked to uh, mental health providers around the world. Uh, and I'm very, very proud of this podcast. And it is available for free. I, I volunteer my time for that podcast as well. I don't get paid for it. Um, and it's something I'm very proud of. Uh, I, uh, I really hope you'll check it out and help help support it, help boost it, help, you know, share the episodes, get those episodes out into the lexicon, get them out into the ether, get them out into, you know, share them on all of your social media feeds. Um, so share OCD SOS with everyone, you know, because I want that podcast to grow, not to get me any recognition, not to get me any notoriety, uh, just to spread the word and, and help end the stigma of obsessive compulsive disorder and the stigma against mental health disorders in general, because it's, it's staggering. Um, imagine, let me put it this way, imagine going to your doctor with all the symptoms of something as common as diabetes and your doctor not knowing the first thing about how to, tr how to treat diabetes. That's what people with OCD face every day. Obsessive compulsive disorder is almost as common as having red hair. Millions of people around the world have OCD. It's the second most diagnosed uh, mental health disorder in the world. And it's the most misdiagnosed mental health disorder in the world. And Ment licensed mental health providers misdiagnose it almost 100% of the time. Uh, it's misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. It's misdiagnosed as schizophrenia. It's misdiagnosed as um, chronic depression. It's misdiagnosed as a multitude of things before it's officially correctly diagnosed as OCD. Uh, and, and that's a major problem. Uh, there's no single correct medication for OCD. Uh, there are a mix of SSRIs, uh, antipsychotics, uh, antidepressants that can work for certain individuals that will, uh, that could treat OCD in certain people because there are different types of OCD. So a, a mix, a cocktail, so to speak, of medications can help certain individuals based on their type of OCD um, but there's no like one pill, like you can't just take albuterol, you know, you can't just take Tylenol, you can't just take Imitrex. Um, and you know, there, you, you know, here's your Prozac. Um, so the, the best thing to do is therapy, which is, um, and it's not even just like, go to your therapist. You have to go to a specially trained therapist who's been specially trained in a certain type of cognitive behavioral therapy called ERP. Um, which is a specific type of therapy that is just for obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> so it's like this catch 22. Um, and that's the one thing that works for obsessive compulsive disorder is um, exposure response prevention therapy. Um, and that's the one thing that we know after decades of research is the one thing that helps with obsessive compulsive disorder is exposure response prevention therapy. Um, and that's the one thing we know works for all OCD patients. Um, and that plus medication can work, but that alone does work. Um, so th that's what we talk about on the OCD SOS podcast. And that's what I've been the most busy with outside of work. Um, outside of my paying job. <laughs> That's the one thing I've been busy, most busy with um, professionally. And then, um, so that's, that's something I really want, I really want you all to um, help me spread the word on. So please, um, whenever you see me share an episode of that, please share that podcast. Even if you don't listen to it, please just share it because it's, I hope you do listen to it, but please just share it. Um, get the word out there. Help me share, help me spread the word on ending the stigma of OCD. Um, but I hope you do listen to it. I hope you learned something from it. Um, and then my kittens, my new kittens, I say my, our, my husband and I, 
Um, so we had Fearless and she passed away, as I mentioned. And we have Midnight, who is the next oldest. Midnight is, um, he'll be, I think, 10 or 11 at the end of the month. Um, Shadow Cat, who just turned six. And then we have, um, we have French Fry and Tater Tot, who just joined us uh, in May. Um, they were found on our front porch um, in May. So they are our newest babies. Um, our newest porch kitties became our new indoor kitties and um, they are adorable. So they're all over my social media feeds. Um, I, they're on my TikTok, they're on my Instagram, they're on my Facebook. Um, so if you follow me on any of those, you've been inundated with photographs of them. Um, I don't have any pictures loaded up for this, uh, <laughs> for this, because I wasn't planning on talking about them. Actually, you know what, I'm going to, I've got photos of them on my, on my phone. So I'll just throw a photo up real quick for you to see. Um, <laughs> uh, because I have plenty of pictures of them on my camera roll. So these are my babies right there. Look how cute. Oh, I got too close. But there they are. The little babies. Anyway, um, yeah, they're adorable. They are, um, they're twins. They're, they're fraternal twins, as I say. And that's, a, you know, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure I know the answer to this. I actually worked in a veterinary office for a number of years. All all cat and dog litters are multi-births by definition. So the mom is pregnant with all the babies at the same time. So if there were two of them, they'd be twins. If there were three, there'd be triplets. If there were four, there'd be quadruplets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So any two of those multi-birth babies, any two of those litter would be twins fraternal, identical, whatever, they'd be twins. So six of a litter would be sextuplets. Four of a litter would be quadruplets, right? Is that right? I feel like that's right. Because they're born from the same mom at the same time within a couple minutes of each other, just like twins would be like human twins would be. They have the same birthday. They have the same mom. And just like fraternal twins, they're born from the same mom at the same time from separate embryos and separate sacs. Now, if they were identical twins, then obviously they would be twins, but they're not, they're fraternal twins, all litters all litter mates are fraternal twins correct or fraternal quadruplets or fraternal sextuplets or fraternal triplets <laughs> yeah anyway we often refer to french fry and tater tot as the twins um because you can't just say the kitties or the kittens because we have multiple cats and I don't care how old your cat is it's a kitten I don't care how old your dog is it's a puppy that's my that's my theory on that <laughs> anyway so um yeah we've been very busy with our with our kittens with the twins um getting them acclimated to the household has been um fun i mean it really has been fun i've forgotten how, what it's like to have not just a kitten in the house but kittens in the house um so that was may uh getting them in the house um since may <laughs> we have found uh four or five more kittens um at our house and there some have shown up in batches and some have shown up let's see one showed up, um, and these stories are on my Facebook. So um, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see the full stories. But the nutshell is um, one cat showed up in a thunderstorm during a tornado watch. Um, we named him Stormy and took him to the Humane Society to get fostered out, and he was immediately adopted. Stormy is um, 
Yeah, Stormy was, um, I think, in June. Yeah, June or July. And then immediately, like two nights later, uh, two more kittens. Um, and then I think a week or so later, two more kittens. Yeah, we've had a very busy, <laughs> very busy summer with uh, kittens showing up at our house. And we don't know who the mom is because our porch kitty, although she's not um, spayed, uh, she's very skinny. And uh, we could easily tell if she were pregnant because I hold her in my lap, I pick her up, I play with her, and I, I would know if she were pregnant. Now, the male cat on our porch, Oreo, and I've, met, I've mentioned him in past episodes, uh, he's definitely the father of a lot of these kittens because he's a tuxedo kitty and there's no denying when a kitten belongs to him. But these last four or five that I just mentioned, Stormy and then the ones that came right, right after him, um, they're all solid gray or solid black. They don't look like they belong to Oreo. Um, so we don't know who, who parented them. Um, but our kittens, uh, French fry and tater tot, are definitely uh, Oreo's kids. We don't know who the mom is, though, uh, because Tiger is not their mom. Now, Scooter, who I've mentioned in past episodes, Scooter's the third porch kitty. Scooter is probably Tiger's baby because she, Scooter is the spitting image of Tiger and looks nothing like Oreo. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't know. Um, no idea. Anyway, so. Um, yeah, that's what we've been busy with, uh, kittens and uh, work and podcasts. Uh, yeah, so that's been fun. Um, and family stuff has been uh, good, erratic, but good. Um, I'm not going to call out any of the drama. There has been some uh, people not getting vaccinated, but claiming they were, which was, yeah, going to leave that alone because that has caused some... Uh, Tension. I will just say tension and um, not going to spill the tea, but I, mean, I will say this. If you're going to not get vaccinated, that's fine. That's your choice. It sucks. You're stupid, but don't tell people you are and um, be honest about it. Um, don't put anyone else at risk because you don't want to be vaccinated. If you choose not to be vaccinated, be honest about it. Be upfront. Let people choose whether or not they want to be around you. Um, yeah. And other family drama is um, when someone tells you that you have a substance problem, believe them and work on it. Because that's scary. And um, people want you around. So those are things that we're dealing with. Um, and I'm telling you those things because I know every family deals with those things. And every family is probably currently dealing with those things right now. So, um, and you might be one of those people. So I want you to hear that from somebody who cares and loves you. So, yeah. I didn't mean for this to be a downer, but anyway, um, yeah, but kittens are always fun. So I want to talk about kittens. So uh, this past weekend was uh, Pride Week end here in Jacksonville because Jacksonville has to be different. Um, and I did not attend, neither one of us attended. Um, I realized in this green screen, uh, it looks like in this lighting, my mustache doesn't connect. It does though. I have hair right here. Promise. When I do that, you can see it. <laughs> That's funny. I look like a look like a rat or some sort of like feral animal. There, you can see it when I do that. Anyway, um, yeah, but um, there you go. Now you can see it. <laughs> um, yeah, we didn't attend. Um, still not big on crowds. Not, not trusting uh, my fellow Floridians. Um, yeah, I just can't imagine a bunch of uh, a bunch of people in the queer community getting together and not wanting to hug. 
and um, I am glad that we didn't go. Uh, I'm sad that we didn't go, but I'm glad we didn't go because I saw pictures and there were not enough masks. And I don't trust people to say that they're vaccinated um, and, and mean it. Uh, yeah, there were not enough masks in those photographs. And um, yeah, COVID is still very real and the Delta variant is too easy to catch. And the new, uh, the Wu variant or the new variant, whatever it's called, uh, that new one that's coming I, I know people are hesitant and they say, well, I'm vaccinated and you know, if I get it, I won't be, it won't be a, a rough case. Yeah, but you can give it to someone else who can't be vaccinated or isn't vaccinated and you know, they can, they can carry it to somebody else and they can carry it to somebody else and so on and so on and so on. And that's the problem because you know, you may be vaccinated and get a mild case and the person you give it to may be vaccinated and get a mild case, but you don't know who they're going to be in contact with. And my six-year-old nephew can't get vaccinated yet because he's not old enough. And his grandmother can't get vaccinated because she has health conditions that she can't get vaccinated because of. And, you know, you don't know. And that's the problem. And my 80-year-old parents and my 80-year-old in-laws are fully vaccinated. But if they get it, it's going to hit them a lot worse than me getting it at 44 years old, I'm fully vaccinated. And if I get it, I've got asthma, you know? Um, I'm on medications for my OCD that could cause me to have a bad reaction to, you know, COVID, um, but I'm fully vaccinated. So why, why should I risk that? Um, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth people going around like it's not a big deal because it is still a big deal. You know, and the, the new variants, um, scary. And I'm not saying don't live your life. I'm just saying be cautious, you know, and going out in a big crowd without a mask. A mask is the least you can do. The absolute least you can do. You know, being vaccinated, it's free. Why not do it? Go get the shot. There's very, 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 very few people who can't get vaccinated. So just get the vaccine and wear a mask, you know? And then to go out in a crowd like that and hug and kiss on people without a mask, it's not hard. Wear the mask, you know? And social distance. Yeah, maybe social distancing is, is really hard for you to do when you're around people you love. I get that but wear the mask, you know, accessorize with the mask, wear a mask with lots of fringe on it, you know, sequins, whatever. But yeah. So, you know, we were, we were sad to not go to pride, but we were also glad after seeing the pictures and videos that we didn't go because it did not look safe to us. Um, and I also heard a lot of uh, mixed messaging uh, beforehand uh, about you know, the cops being there and, you know, they were there anyway. And should they be there? Should they not be there? I was torn on that. Um, they were there and uh, corporate sponsors. No, not much change there. Um, and it was a small event, which was kind of sad, but um, yeah, I'm not going to get into all that. I, I made my feelings known before that. Um, I do think Pride in Jacksonville needs to change, though. I think it needs to change drastically. And um, this would have been a good year to do it because, you know, any anybody who was upset, any corporate sponsors who are upset about being turned away, you guys could have blamed COVID. You could have said, oh, we're going to restructure this year. We're going to rebrand. We're going to read this. We're going to read that. Blame COVID, you know? You could have blamed COVID. You could have said, oh, this is a good year to, to revamp things. And coulda, woulda, coulda. Um, but that's okay. You know, moving forward, um, changes can come. So yeah, we missed pride and that's sad, but you know, there's other things to do. Um, Jeff's birthday is coming up, my husband and my mom's birthday is coming up. So we've got exciting things happening with those and, uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, speaking of exciting things, uh, we are taking a family vacation for the holidays, uh, Hanukkah and Christmas are right around the corner. And we are planning a trip. We don't know where we're going yet. We don't know what we're doing. 
Um, but we know that we are going to take our first family vacation uh, in almost two years. Um, we're going to go somewhere secluded and we're going to do whatever it is we can do. Um, looks like it looks like I've got makeup smudged. I think it's just a shout out because it wasn't there earlier. Yeah, that's gone. Um, and one of the kittens is trying to get in my in my studio here. Um, yeah, we're going to go somewhere fun. We're going to go somewhere probably. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. They're banging on the door. That means it's time for me to go. Um, they need to get fed because it's now breakfast time. Um, but yeah, we're going to go somewhere secluded, just the family um, and, uh, you know, somewhere nice. I don't know, uh, like a, a Airbnb at a, you know, on a beach somewhere. Um, we were going to go somewhere cold with snow, uh, but then we thought if we get snowed in, what are we going to do? So yeah, that's the plan. So um, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll post pictures, I'm sure. But um, yeah, in the meantime, I uh, hopefully will um, get some more interviews with guests lined up. And uh, yeah, keep you posted. But I know this was more of a video diary than it was an actual episode, but uh, I just wanted to keep you all posted on what we're doing. Oh, see, see. I almost forgot. Uh, the Safe Resource Center is another uh, thing that I volunteer with. And we have our first support group coming up uh, for the um, LGBTQIA uh, community of Jacksonville, and it'll be via Zoom. So if you are a member of the Safe Resource Center um, Facebook page, check us out and uh, we will have the information there. It's on October 27th. And uh, yeah, so. Peace, love, and applesauce, y'all, and live long and prosper. We will uh, see you on the next episode. Love you. Bye. Stay safe.